Hello, everybody. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by all the super awesome people who donate to the show through our Patreon page. If you would like to be one of those awesome people, please visit our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash froggystyle. That's frog, the letter E, underscore style. I have just updated uh, the Patreon page. I'm still kind of getting the hang of Patreon. So I just updated all the rewards. Um, So you can donate as little as $1 a month, and you will get access to a bunch of bonus content that way. And the maximum amount you can donate is $50 a month, and that obviously gets you way better rewards. If you do donate just $1 a month, you gain access to a bunch of bonus content. I mean, that's only $12 a year, and it really helps us out here. Um, But you gain access to the Tales from the Tabletop live sessions, as well as the Big Think bonus episodes and all bonus interviews. So consider donating to the show through Patreon. It helps us out a lot here. If you are fans of the show, consider joining our email list. You can find the sign-up page at fsproductions.ca. It's literally going to be the first thing you see when you visit the website. Uh, The email list just helps me to keep you guys informed about show releases, as well as what's coming up in the future. And also, if there are any giveaways, uh, like there is on today's episode you are automatically entered into them. So sign up for the email list at fsproductions.ca. While you're there, uh, just check out the website. There's a lot of other cool things there, um, like articles. uh, All the podcasts are posted on there. And also there's a creative writing section. So fsproductions.ca, check it out. On this episode of Groove Talk, I am joined by the band Dead Pixel. I had a lot of fun talking to these guys. They're really easy to talk to. It was lots of fun, good conversation. I went out to their jam space to record this podcast. We talk about some of the trials and tribulations that the band has gone through to get to where they are now as well as the recording process and kind of how the their album came together the album they just released not too long ago is called the sounds of fourth place you can find a sample from that album at the end of the episode uh the song is called chameleon it's a really good song if you would like to pick up your own copy of Dead Pixel's album, The Sound of Fourth Place, uh, you can find it anywhere music is sold. Um, I'll have the links in the episode notes, but I think Bandcamp is probably the best place to get it from. We also talk about some of the unique projects that the uh, the band's working on. Uh, they'll be before ah, they will be performing alongside a. Uh, a play in April. Uh, I think that's at the beginning of April. And they're also playing a lot of shows coming up here. Uh, I think they have four or five within the next two or three weeks. Also, these guys have the softest band shirts that I have ever seen. Uh, I bought one, and I highly recommend that you do so as well. I've worn it. It feels like you are not even wearing a shirt, which is awesome. Um, This may be, that may sound weird, but uh, seriously, you guys have to check out these shirts. They're really awesome. Um, I don't endorse anything that I don't use myself on this podcast. So, (laughs) Uh, so without further talking, I was about to say do, but I didn't want to. So let's get into the interview with Dead Pixel. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode of Groove Talk. (laughs) 
This is Groove Talk with Froggy Style. Uh, welcome to another episode of Groove Talk, everybody. Um, on this week's episode, I am joined by Dead Pixel. Yay! <laughs> uh, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Dan, guitar and vocal. I'm Jason, I play drums and vocal. I am Dally, I am sometimes play bass. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so, I guess, why don't you kind of describe, like, what Dead Pixel is? A band. <laughs> a band. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. No, uh, we're... Basically, between the three of us, we have a pretty wide variety of musical tastes, and then kind of the idea with this band was that we could just play whatever kind of music that we wanted to when it came up. Um, so, you know, whatever we end up listening to that week is usually what a lot of our music ends up sounding like. So that was kind of the main idea behind the band. Okay. Cool. Um, and I know, like, most bands hate this question but how would you kind of describe your sound Toronto indie rock (laughs) progressive doom metal (laughs) Uh, we've kind of gotten a bunch of different answers across the board so we just say rock because it's how I would explain it to my mother it's it's almost kind of punky in a way too I guess Mm. but somehow not punk rock (laughs) we we have been described as spooky pop theatrics one time so we're kind of proud of that one we've also been described as not offensive (laughs) there you go nice so I know that you guys kind of uh, you just released an album recently yes we did Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that Go ahead, Dan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the album's called The Sounds of Fourth Place. Um, it has been a pretty big undertaking. Uh, it actually took us almost exactly a year to finish. Uh, that everything that could have gone wrong in the process did. <laughs> but kind of the start of the album is how we really solidified our band. And then now that the album's actually done, we've been able to make more of a forward push. Kind of in getting shows and meeting people and all that. Uh, yeah, it's a six song album um, it kind of is, is a good example of what we mean by whatever music we're listening to that week is what the songs end up sounding like as all six songs are kind of different from each other um, you know we have our fast punk tune we have our catchy sing along pop tune we have our emo punk tune uh, we have like a you know little rock and roll ditty in there as well uh, so it's, it's kind of probably the best example of I guess us being as versatile as we can Okay. Um, so you said that like uh, everything that went wrong kind of did. Could you like elaborate on that a little bit? I guess. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so I guess at at the very start of the album, uh, when we started recording, we actually I I wasn't the singer at the time, um, but we'd been trying to find a singer for about a year into this band. Um, we're about a two year old band now, um, and I've only been the singer for the last year. So the first bit of it was trying to find the members and, and try to kind of fill it all together. Uh, then when that was taking too long, uh, we decided that we were going to go in the studio and just start recording um, so we can kind of use it as a, a showpiece for singers to bring in. So the first song we ended up recording was Chameleon, and in the middle of recording that, I lost my job. And I decided, screw it, this is going to be a thing that happens, and I put the rest of my life savings, which wasn't a lot, into uh, actually finishing the song. Uh, and then so that was the first thing that went wrong. Uh, but that ended up actually working out for us in the long run because I did a, a rough vocal track just so we can kind of show singers because I was not a good singer back at then or even now. Um, especially now. Especially now. <laughs> but uh, that rough, unfinished version of the song that we had by the end of January, we ended up sending that into the Ship and Anchor songwriting contest. And to our surprise, we got in. Uh, and our actual very first performance was at the Ship and Anchor Song Writing Contest, and we ended up coming fourth in our category. That's Sweet. actually how we got the name of our album, The Sounds of Fourth Place. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, did you guys all, like, know each other before the band, or...? No. no. So, yeah, Jason, Dan and I have known each other for, I think, like, five or six years we've now. Been, we've been casual acquaintances in bars and whatnot. Yeah. We're normal friends. I guess yeah. you're right. <laughs> and, uh, we hang yeah. out in the same places. No yeah. same people. Never together, but you know, in <laughs> general area. Yeah, so I met Dan uh, through a post on Reddit, and uh, at the time I was looking to do some more music 
activities and uh I think you had a really rough track of Chameleon down. That's right. I did record an even earlier version of Chameleon before yeah. the one we did. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. It, yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't very polished, but it was really, really catchy. I really, really dug the song. So I said, Hey, do you need a drummer? And so we met for the first time, jammed it out and, uh, yeah, we've been you know, jamming together. Here we are, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So. That was actually just over two years ago as well. So Jason and I have been jamming pretty much straight since then. Yeah. And then I just met Towley through Dan. So mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I guess this lineup of the band as it is has been together for just over a year now. Um, basically, when we got into the Ship and Anchor contest, that's when we all kind of just like, well, I guess Dan's going to just be the singer then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then we started making a lot more progress once we kind of got that out of the way. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so is the plan to keep it a three-piece, or...? Um, potentially. I mean, unless we can find, like, a fourth member that fits. Yeah. Mm. On, which, on is, the... which is incredibly difficult to look for. So. Yeah. <laughs> on, on, on the album, we ended up... Because we ended up uh, working with uh, Eric Spilpiss at, at uh, uh, Evia Studios. Um, and he's really great when it comes to, like, producing and all the instrumentation. So he ended up putting a lot of keys on the album which we hadn't really even thought of at the time. And then we ended up having um, two of our friends uh, come in and sing on the album, uh, and uh, two female singers, I should say. And then we kind of really liked how that sounded. So if we do end up eventually bringing a fourth member, it'll probably be a female singer that plays keys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. But uh, yeah, and until we can kind of find that unicorn, it'll probably just be the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, putting it out there now. <laughs> if you're a listener and you sing and play the keyboard. <laughs> um, so I guess, what did you kind of... Is there anything in particular that you maybe learned from recording this latest album that you plan on taking into your next release? Eric's a wizard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eric, uh, Eric's Philpiss. Like, if you ever want to get like the ideas you hear in your head and have them like on the album, but have all that energy and like, he he just makes everything sound exactly the way you want it. We can't say enough good things about like his recording process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's always lessons when because this was my first time really doing intense recording, and so as the drummer, the most important thing is he played to the click track. And so just doing that somehow, sometimes your planes almost comes out robotic, like where there's not so much, you know, of the emotion behind it. So it's almost like an art to stay with the metronome, but also put passion in your own voice behind your plane. And so it's kind of finding that happy balance where you're playing your own style, but also on time, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, there's, there's, I think there's, it's a different atmosphere for sure in the studio versus way different than on stage, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, you guys said you just kind of started playing shows recently, or yeah. So even even though really we we've been playing shows since that uh, the ship show back in May, um, just because more things went wrong. Um, just like for example, I got really sick for two months, and we ended up having to cancel a bunch of shows. Um, and then, uh, as you can see, we're in our lovely new jam room that we set up for the first time today. We actually had a major flood that happened two months ago. Oh, wow. Uh, where we lost most of the equipment in the jam room. We lost this whole basement. Uh, and, it, yeah, basically I've just moved back in here recently, and today is the first day we've had the jam room set up. So that also derailed us for a long time. Um, so basically just between recording, other band responsibilities, flood, losing jobs, uh, work schedules kind of clashing, we really couldn't do too much in the last year. Um, but so far in we decided 2018, to make up for it in February. <laughs> yeah, in, 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 in 2018 alone, by the end of February, we'll have done over 10 performances. Oh wow! So we we've, we've done more in just the first two months alone than we've done in our first two years as a band. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so starting off 2018 strong then. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, I know that you guys played the uh, Rocking for Dollars birthday show. Yes. It was uh, last week, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I guess what is like. What does rocking for dollars mean? Rocking for dollars mean to you guys? Oh, it's it's, it's just one of our favorite yeah. events of the week. Yeah, like it's you know like what what BJ and Broken City do over there. Like they really foster like a huge sense of community. Like most of the bands and people we've met in the last couple of years have mainly been through rocking for dollars. Um, I <clears throat> and I know we have like. You know, some places like Vern's, which is, you know, really good for giving every band their first shot. And even if you're established, you know, you still go back and play Vern's because who doesn't love Vern's? Yeah. Um, so them and Rockin' for Dollars are really like the two main community builders that I, that I really feel like in the Calgary music scene. And it, it, 
just it, it really is the Calgary music scene. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think Rocking for Dollars has done like amazing things for the Calgary music scene, mm -hmm. um, bringing bands together that might not you know play together and stuff like that, and you know mixing hip hop artists with like you know punk bands mixed with like metal bands mixed with whatever but <laughs> we, we've actually seen one of the greatest bands we've ever seen at a rockin for dollars and it's uh, really? this touring or this band from uh, i think ottawa called the yeah. lionels yeah and they're like uh, a very soul and funk influenced band all incredible musicians to the point where they completely tore the roof off like a half empty rock for dollars yeah and they you know sold more merch than I think I've seen any band sell at any show <laughs> but it was just it's the kind of place where you can be a big act or a small act and just go in and still be surprised yeah definitely I've definitely been surprised at Rocking for Dollars numerous times um, so I guess what does other than playing a lot of shows like what does this new year kind of hold for you guys uh, a lot of new and terrifying opportunities yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess something we haven't really talked about much on our on our band page, but we have more on our kind of personal accounts. Uh, we actually got hired to do the music for a play at UFC uh, in April. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, we got hired by Zach McKendrick for his uh, rendition of Trafford Tansy. It's a uh, a play all about kind of uh, a female wrestler making her own in the ring, and uh, it's a really interesting play involving people getting like suplexed mid performance <laughs> and a lot of acrobatics and. Uh, we basically got hired to write the music and be the band in the play and we've never done anything like that before and uh, yeah we're super excited to do it awesome so does that involve like writing all new all new tunes for that then oh yeah yeah so it's um, we like it, it's, it's a play that's been around for about 30 40 years now um, so there, there are kind of lyrics in place but we were kind of given just free reign to do whatever we wanted with the music um, and we, we ended up sending the the, uh, the director a bunch of our off the floor samples and the album itself, and he really liked the music and liked what you know we we're kind of presenting to him. Uh, so yeah, I think it's going to be a, an interesting show to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so how did you how did you get that all hooked up? Sorry. Uh, weirdly enough, it was just an ad on the Calgary uh, Music Facebook page. Okay. And he was just looking for bands, and there was a bunch of people that had submitted their names, and we ended up getting contacted by him, and then just kind of, yeah, through conversation, and then through sending the music, uh, we ended up getting picked. We uh, we met with the cast a couple weeks ago, and uh, yeah, it definitely is going to be a, a new experience for all of us. Nice. That sounds that sounds awesome. That's mm -hmm. really interesting too. <laughs> yeah, it's happening in the uh, first couple days of April. Okay. I believe it is the third, fourth of April, and the sixth and seventh. Cool. Okay. So, like, what would what do you guys do to like prepare for something like that? I don't think we figured that out yet. Yeah, yeah sit around your underwear, <laughs> you know, get some, get some Cheetos. <laughs> you prepare for anything. I <laughs> know uh, a, a lot of it has been, definitely been kind of reading through the script. Um, we're actually going to be using a lot of our own music for the performance. Uh, we're just going to kind of tweak it to the lyrics that are already there. Um, so a lot of it is just kind of reading through the lyrics and trying to figuring out the cadences and how you can kind of fit all the words and kind of make them work with the music. Uh, so just... Mainly a lot of panicking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you, uh, I guess how do you guys prepare for just a regular show then? Is it something very similar? Uh, like put on some pants. <laughs> <laughs> One leg at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're we're pretty good with our jam schedule. Um, yeah. You know, we're we're trying to kind of fit writing some new music in with our regular jam, but we, we try to make sure that we run the set uh, at every performance, and then. Uh, if, if we have a lot of shows coming up like we do next week, we try to maybe get two jams in if possible. Um, we also record every jam and performance that we do so we can listen back to it later and yeah. figure out yeah. the spots. That, that cool. might be one of the best things we've ever started doing is we have like a little Zoom recorder and at the beginning of every jam, we just turn it on and put it in the corner and then you just pop it into Audacity and you just cut out the chunks of songs and just actually having that feedback and knowing you know where are their mistakes, where are their vocal parts that are going weird... Uh, it's just it's made a huge difference as well as writing as well like you never know when you're gonna have that one little like jam or groove or something that could turn into like you know your your next crowd favorite song yeah and it's just having that thing captured so you can play it back and get ideas it's just 
hugely beneficial. Yeah, I could I could imagine. It's like instant feedback, I guess, and it's I guess it's kind of hard when you are playing music to actually know what you sound like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the same, you know, it's the same with the podcast. I think I sound way cooler than I actually do. <laughs> hey, I think you sound pretty cool. Uh, thanks, man. <laughs> um, so I guess, uh, who's I, like, why did you guys, like, decide to start recording the performances like that? And who, who I, whose idea was it? Um, I guess it's because I just got a Zoom recorder from my roommate. Yeah. And uh, at first, I didn't really like sitting through and listening to all of our performances over and over. Uh, but then it just being able to actually tweak and find out where things are going wrong, what's sounding good. Um, it just, I can't not listen to the performances back now. It's just, I need to make sure that everything sounds like it should. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I kind of feel like every band kind of comes to a moment and they, they have to kind of like decide, you know, what are they, you know, kind of doing. Like, is this a thing that they are pursuing seriously? Is this just a for fun thing? Like, have you guys had that conversation? Like, <laughs> I think they took a whole lot of time off work, so I did better. They better be serious. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's, Wait, what? <laughs> it's it's the kind of thing where I think we would all like to do music professionally. Yeah. Um, but you know, we have to have our our day jobs while we're we're kind of doing this, but. Um, it's kind of thing where, at least for, for Tally and I, we've played in bands that have toured cross country and, and all that, and like we know that this is the kind of thing we want to do. Um, and then I guess for, for you, you just wanted to play in a more serious band, right, Jason? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's kind of a, a bit of both, because I mean, if you're if you're not having fun with the music, like it, I think that kind of that's a, a bigger problem. So you have to figure out why you're doing that. So a lot of it is for fun, but yeah, for sure, it's. Uh, it's definitely a new experience. This is my first time being on an EP before, so um, I've never really been on a tour either. So um, I'm just kind of <laughs> going with the flow here and <laughs> seeing where it leads. But uh, yeah, I'm having fun, and uh, it's been great so far. So awesome! I you know I was I was fortunate in that my my very first band that I joined in the city was a band that was already established, and they were doing a lot of touring and recording. And even though things kind of ended badly with that band it really kind of instilled in me like what kind of musician I wanted to be and you know working with people that were a lot more professional about how they uh, how they approached music you know as far as you know meeting with the promoters and meeting everybody and you know doing the social media thing and really being good with that and that really because it is, it is a lot of work when you you know put a lot more effort into what happens on like the side of music not just when you're on stage yeah but it's yeah, if you're, I mean, if you're one of those people that, that you know that that's what you want to do, then you just go at it, I guess. Yeah. That's the lamest way I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people, like, don't realize that, too, is that it's not just about the music when you're in a band. It's, you know, it is social media. It's advertising. It's all these other little things. It's like maybe... The music is 50% of it. <laughs> it's the fun part of it. Anyways. It's the fun part of it, for sure. But there's I all really these like other... spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> you can only write so many, like, Instagram hashtags before you just want to hit your head against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys kind of delegate those tasks then? Um, we all kind of have our own strengths, and we just kind of fell into what we're better at than the others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty funny, too, because we, Tally and I generally handle the social media aspect of it but we don't really communicate before we do. So sometimes we'll just like double promote the same show repeatedly through the same day. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. I've heard nobody complain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're still described as non-offensive. <laughs> um, so how, does, how do you find balancing kind of your work and band life? Uh, for Jason and I, it's not too too bad because we both work nine to five office jobs so we know we have our evenings free we know we have our weekends free yeah. um for tally it's a little more difficult to schedule around yeah i bartend uh-huh. I'm a career bartender so anytime i play a show i have to take a night off work and sometimes that's not as easy as uh, it should be yeah <laughs> so it's it's more generally we, we can't take shows that are last minute offers unless by some miracle we just already happen to have that day free yeah. Um, but luckily, we've we've been having really good luck with booking a lot of shows in the future. We have pretty much a show booked every month until August, at least at the moment. So as long as we have it like far enough back, we can kind of work around everyone's schedule. 
Awesome. Um, so I guess with the the summer coming up and stuff, um, is there any like maybe music festivals that you guys are looking to apply to, or can you talk about that? Uh, uh, we are currently on the High High River River Fest. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Sorry, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not looking at my phone, so it's saved in my phone. I think it's High River Rock Fest. High River Rock Fest. That, 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 that's, that, that sounds close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Can we do some river dancing? <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems like a cool festival. I've never been to it. I do love festivals, and I would love to play more festivals. Mm-hmm. Cool. But I also don't know of any festivals. Yeah, there was, there was <laughs> good old cool like that. There, there was good old Loesch Fest a couple of years ago. That was oh, that was a time, but that one's shut down now. <laughs> uh, so, is this your first time playing festivals, or have, have you played festivals before? Or? I've played festivals before back in Ontario, like twelve years ago. Okay, that was just mostly just a hundred kids getting together and camping in somebody's farm. <laughs> uh, we play music. It sounds like a Canadian festival. Good old Neon Farm. I tell you. It's called Rockapalooza Festophical. There are seven of them. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. Um, so I guess compared to like shows, is there any anything different that you would do to prepare for a music festival? Um, I guess it would just be a lot more rehearsals leading up to it. Like, you know, if, if it was kind of, you know, we, maybe next year we decide to apply for Pusa in Montreal, rehearse, 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 get everything down, get rid of every tiny little flub. Like, when you kind of put yourself out on that bigger stage, you really want to make sure that, you know, you blow people away. You don't want to kind of treat it like just, ah, you know, it's like a Friday Vern's night where we can just kind of, like, half-ass it. Like, you want to really be at your best. So sorry, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, think Clint listens to podcasts. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> and if he does, definitely not this one, probably. <laughs> we'll find out in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, you get, if you get angry messages. <laughs> yeah, but that's just Tuesday. Yeah. Honestly, I'd be honored, so please let me know because. You'll <laughs> <laughs> right. be, be the first to find out if uh, Clint yells at us online. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, somebody's listening, yes. <laughs> um, so, maybe, could you, like, describe, like, what a Dead Pixel show would be like? Like, the energy-wise and stuff like that? And Okay. Uh, we definitely have a lot more of a swing element in our music. Okay. Um, it's a lot of swung beats, so it's, it's very dancey. Um, so, you know, like, depending on, on what the crowd's like, if everyone's kind of in a good mood already and we kind of start playing you're probably going to see a lot of people dancing, whether that just be the move where they have the one beer in their hand and they kind of just turn side to side, (laughs) but that still counts. That's my not whole thing. It's too bad it's not visual. (laughs) But, oh man, you guys would be in for a treat if you could see it. Oh my God, I got some great moves. Yeah, there's definitely definitely the swing element in it. I think most of our songs are really upbeat as well, like really Mm. up-tempo. I I don't really know the BPM of our slowest song, but I know it's... it's, I'm pretty sure it's it's, like 180. Yeah, like it's fine. (laughs) So yeah, like a kind of an upbeat swing swingy type rock show so mm. something like that cool yeah when i like when i listened to the out al- uh, the album i would have said you know kind of more upbeat like pop punk music mm. yeah <laughs> the, so the, the the songs on that album are, are definitely closer to the pop punk kind of thing but we a, a lot of the songs we wrote really when we first started yeah. and then you know we've written a lot more songs since then but um yeah de- definitely just the upbeat swing feel is is probably our main go-to cool so you your guys' sound is kind of like it's evolved over time and you know i guess the more you play together and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. yeah i would say so for sure (laughs) so so i guess how does the songwriting process kind of work with you guys um i guess it kind of works in different ways um i guess really when we started it was more i had a lot of songs kind of backlogged that i never did anything with um so the, the sixth song on the album, Silver, is actually a nine-year-old song at this point. Wow. And I've brought that song to many different bands, and finally getting to record it was was amazing. Um, but yeah, so a lot of it is I'll either write it ahead of time and bring it to them, and then we'll tweak it from there. Um, <clears throat> or another way we do it, because we end up recording our jams, you know, we, we end up getting bored and we start noodling and we just kind of fuck around with it and then we'll listen back to it and be like oh that was actually a really cool part and then we'll expand on it that way 
uh, we actually had one song that, uh, pretty funny, Strut Your Stuff, which isn't on the album, where it started because Jason and I were jamming two years ago on this riff, and he really loved the riff we had, and we wanted to do something with it and turn it into a song, and we wrote this whole other song around it, and then we realized that, oh, this actually only fits in for one part right here. So the original riff that Jason loved so much only happens one time in the song. <laughs> and we wrote this whole other cool song around it. So it's just, yeah, you never really know kind of what's going to come from that. Cool. Um, with this band, do you guys have any, like, favorite kind of standout moments? Maybe shows or just, you know, jam times, like any really cool moments <laughs> uh, I mean the, the ship and anchor show like, is, is definitely my highlight me. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean pretty much every walk for dollars is, is a grand old time pandering <laughs> <laughs> no actually I, I will say the, we love you, BJ. The, 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 the the rock for dollars birthday show was also a highlight just because it was a completely packed room the energy was great the crowd was incredible everyone knew each other there so it was just getting a room of all your best friends and being around all your other favorite bands, uh, yeah. so yeah, probably probably that show and the Ship and Anchor show would be the, the good ones for me. Cool. Uh, have you guys like um, been getting a lot of support, a lot of support from like the local Calgary scene and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, more than I would have expected. <laughs> Just go, go sure, we don't have to book all of our own shows. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we actually, actually want us to play. That's we uh, we actually haven't really had to book any of our own shows yet. We had we had one show where we kind of had to uh, actually March sixteenth at Burns, uh, less miserable. The night terrors, Gramercy Rips, and Dead Pixel catch us there. Uh, but that one we kind of got a hand pick bands we wanted on that bill. Cool. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we we really haven't had to do a lot of kind of work finding venues on our own so that's been that's been very nice that's awesome so people have been contacting you then to play that's mm -hmm. that's really cool and uh we ended up also kind of making a few fans just from our our last couple live shows and kind of yeah just meeting people that then come out to the next show has been kind of cool knowing that people actually like what we do <laughs> cool so how's it how's it been seeing that fan base kind of grow uh, well, it's gone from one person to four. So that uh, no, I mean it's. it's <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, like a, a lot of these people are people that I've already known in the scene for a long time, and just from being in other bands, you know, they they already kind of knew about us just from me talking to them about it. Um, but now that people have actually kind of heard the album, seen us play, um, yeah, I think we're we're kind of we're getting there slowly, but we're we're starting to build a fan base. Sweet. <laughs> It's uh, it's surprising how many people or how many bands have told me that like one of the best ways to like make it in the music scene is just to not be a dick. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Good <laughs> words to live by. Bless yeah. all facets of life. No, I mean it, it's basically talk to everyone, make yeah. friends with every band, you know. Don't be a shithead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so for maybe somebody who is just kind of starting out, maybe forming a band or getting into music or the music scene, like maybe what advice would you give to that person? Um, well, actually bringing back a point from the last one, don't be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> like, like seriously, that can, that can really go a long way. Like try to work with everyone as best you can, you know, really don't, just like belittle everyone in your band like you know if you're gonna offer criticism you know have it be constructive don't just be like that suck don't do this um and also like find people that you can actually survive a tour with that is hugely important <laughs> if you can't be like in a close space with someone for like a couple hours at a time your band won't survive long enough yeah i, I don't yeah i think if you're not really friends or at least acquaintances with your bandmates and you're not getting along then it's not going to last <laughs> like <laughs> oh and actually uh, here, yeah. here, here's here's another big one uh, nothing will kill a band faster than just not jamming like if you're if you're starting a new band and you're jamming with friends and you jam one week and you guys try to figure out the next day to jam figure that shit out right away set it in stone because the second you, you know, skip a week for jamming, then the next week you might do it again and again, and I've been part of so many bands that have fallen apart for that reason. And one of the reasons that, you know, with everything that's gone wrong with us, despite, you know, we've been together for two years now, is that 
we really made that effort, even if we were tired or sick or whatever, to still show up and make it through. And awesome. yeah, like nothing will kill your band faster than not jamming for a couple of weeks. Because <laughs> uh, we've had jams where one of us will have an off day and just there's no chemistry whatsoever. And it's mm-hmm. like, it's never a waste of time because it's like, first of all, you're establishing that routine, but like there's always something that comes out of a jam, I feel, no matter how bad we're all doing. So mm-hmm. it's really important to have that consistency, I think, for sure. Cool. Yeah. And so are you guys like, you guys are solid on your jams then like every week or uh yeah actually i mean even you know we, we had our flood and we lost our jam room and unfortunately just because of getting gear and everything we were kind of out of commission for about a month uh but then luckily uh, jason's uh parents were gracious enough to host us at their place and let us jam as much as we needed to and uh yeah like you know we drove all the way to the northwest every time and reset up our gear and even though we had shows we'd have to go and load the stuff in and out but knowing that you know we have to make sure we keep jamming no matter what that kind of kept us through that part as well cool so have you guys received like a lot of support from your families mm-hmm. yeah I have that. For sure. yeah, yeah. Dan's uh, mom loves me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does she talks about you all the time I know it's kind of weird that Tally's such a nice boy <laughs> I think I should be more like Tally <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I know I know. a lot of my family have told me they love uh, working out to the music, especially the song Going Down. Uh, and every week I get a new text from my mother telling me what song on the album she loves the most. <laughs> Which is, it's, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so I guess kind of besides music, like what else, what else do you guys like to do? Like maybe as stuff? Or, <laughs> <laughs> maybe individually or as a group? Uh, yeah, I don't really got much else in life. (laughs) (laughs) Cigarettes are pretty swell. (laughs) I know it's it's almost like the the answer. Combining those two things, whoa! We could drink and smoke. (laughs) It's funny the answer that is almost like more music because I know like a lot of us play in different projects as well, right? So if we're not playing with Dead Pixel, we're playing with another band, right? So that is is a good point. I know. So So do you guys all have like multiple bands going on? We all got side bands. Yeah. Yeah. Is this is this the main band and the other ones are side bands or Uh, is that (laughs) one of the other bands becomes more successful? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, I I know I know for a lot of it was I was kind of caught with another band for a while where that ended up being a huge time commitment where we were recording an album and then going on tour most of the summer and it really put a dent in what we could accomplish because we were also in the middle of recording our album uh, and then that was that was a big reason for me quitting that band was that I just didn't have enough time to do like Dead Pixel and so at least at least for me because I'm also the singer and guitar player this is this is my main project cool um, I guess do you guys uh, is there a tour on the horizon or not yet, but it's it's definitely something we've been we've been kind of throwing out there and trying to figure out when we'd want to go do it. Um, we we feel that we kind of have to make a little more groundwork in Calgary itself first. Like we just uh, as of last week, we now have our first full run of merch. We got shirts, stickers, CDs. I've never had stickers um, before. I'm stoked. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they're super adorable, and they got our band logo on them, and we put them in bathrooms all over the city. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so now it's it's we're really going to try to make this effort for this year to play a lot of shows, meet a lot more people, and then kind of once we've kind of have our footing in Calgary, then we can start spreading out to other locations. Um, luckily, just because of Tally and I have toured a lot, we know a lot of the venues outside in BC and out east, and we know those promoters, so that at least will help us get shows when we start to do that. Awesome. Um, I was speaking of like merch and stuff, but like your guys' logo is really cool. Thank you. I, did uh, did one of you like design it or like a friend or where'd you get your logo from? Uh, so our, our first song, uh, which is the first song on the album, Chameleon, um, I kind of saw like a bunch of polygon art online, like where, you know, it's like a, a deer head, but it's made up of triangles kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, and I really liked that idea. So I went to my roommate, Hannah, and uh, I got her to kind of draw out the idea of like the, the polygon art chameleon. And that just kind of became our, our band logo ever from we were too lazy to come up with a new one and it worked so <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of have a, a bit of a running theme because on, on the album cover itself it's uh, it's a picture of a trophy but also done in that polygon art so I think we're, we're going to try to kind of keep the art theme of, of that like polygonal art because uh, it looks really crisp and clean I love 
very kind polygamous. of cartoony, uh, cartoony. Yes, <laughs> it's very polygamous. Uh, I, 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 lo I love like that kind of cartoon art style for album covers. I think it just looks really cool. Like something that you can get tattooed on yourself is is really what I was going for. Uh, so yeah, it's probably will be the theme kind of moving forward for merch. Cool. Um, and I guess like how important do you guys think merch is for a band like? That may be a silly question. Yeah. If you want to make money, fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, so with, with our shirts, we kind of want, we wanted the idea that um, it, it, we wanted it to be the kind of shirt that people would want to wear just because, not just because they were supporting that band. So we made sure we got like a really soft material that's like really comfy to wear. Ooh. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's the kind of. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to get Mexicans your audio. know they're soft fighters. I'm going to get your audio reaction to feeling our shirt. <laughs> Oh, wow. Actually, yeah. <laughs> shit. You heard it first here, folks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very soft shirt. Yeah, so we, we, we want to be the kind of thing that, like, you know, you just want to wear just because, and then we get free advertising for it. So. Yeah, yeah, sick. Yeah, um, I have shirts, and my shirts suck. So, <laughs> compared to those shirts. <laughs> well, uh, go to uh, Primal Screen in uh, Calgary for shirts. We've plugged a lot of people in this podcast. <laughs> we, know, we know a lot of people that do good work, like yeah. Primal Screen. No, they, uh, they, and Eric over at Heavy <laughs> No, they, 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 they gave us a really, really good quote, um, and they we didn't think we'd have the shirts till after these last couple round of shows, and they had them ready for us before the Broken City uh, anniversary. And we just we couldn't be happier with the quality, and you know they were great at communication and all that. So we're definitely probably gonna go with them again. Nice, like yeah, seriously, wow, yeah. super soft, <laughs> so soft. <laughs> um, so I guess are are there like kind of any other bands in the city that you guys are really digging right now? Oh, less miserable. I cannot get enough of less miserable. I, I love their albums so much. They are so pretty much. fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Any, any others? Or... Oh, I gotta think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Those conniving okay. cadavers are pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. James Ready, though. That yeah. is a good, solid thing. <laughs> Man, that Curse the Weather? Yeah, Curse the Weather. Oh, amazing. <laughs> we are in no way affiliated with the <laughs> <laughs> I like to ask that question because it gives me uh, ideas of who I should maybe have on my podcast. So. I really like Mademoiselle. Yeah, Mademoiselle is great. I'm a big fan of that band. Yeah. It's a good old Ghost Factory if you're going for the Pander vote, oh. but I do love Ghost Factory. <laughs> Everybody loves Ghost Factory. Uh, Ghost Factory is sick. <laughs> oh, we did a show with Harsh. They were pretty sweet. Yeah, Harsh, 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 Harsh the band. Yeah. They are a very fun punk band to watch. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, like... I. Before I started doing this podcast, I wasn't really like involved in the Calgary music scene at all, mm -hmm. and uh, I was actually really blown away by like the quality of music that comes from the local scene. Mm -hmm. um, there are some absolutely amazing just hidden bands that they don't necessarily play a lot of shows, but then you just see them, you're just like, I, I need to see these people the next time they're playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After, like going back to Rockin' for Dollars when we saw the Lionels, like that cost us three dollars for admission and it was probably the best show I've ever seen. Yeah, to, to live, like ever. three dollars for admission and then forty dollars for merch. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, each, each, each one of us in our own band bought it individually from each other every single piece of merch that they were selling <laughs> and it just still listen to their album to this day yeah. and it was but I guess they're from Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> but still yeah, no, Cal Calgary has some just unbelievable talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, the first, one of the very first bands that did that for me was actually the Galacticas. <laughs> Your bass players suck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, he really was like super it. handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I hear he's an amazing lover, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope people can't go back and do the math on a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> uh, the people who listen to this are probably stupid, don't worry. <laughs> Hi, Anthony. <laughs> Just joking, you're all lovely people. Um... Yeah, I guess, are there any kind of just, uh, final things you guys want to throw out there? Buy our stuff! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. Buy our stuff! Available online, and in person. We deliver, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we could probably maybe mention some of the shows we have coming up. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know when this is going to be released, but... Uh, uh, probably uh, before the end of February, for sure. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just run down the, the list, uh, but you never know. So we got uh, this Sunday, February 18th, we're playing the original music showcase at Blind Beggar. Uh, then we're playing uh, the Weezer edition of Rockin' for Dollars. We'll be doing a rendition of Keep Fishing. Uh, then we got the Distortion Punk vs. Metal on February 22nd. Uh, then our next show, which I'm very excited for after that, is March 16th at Vern's, and that'll be the Gramercy Riffs, Us, the Night Terrors, and Less Miserable. I could not be more excited for that show. That's uh, what we do. If we want to see a band, we'll just put ourselves on the bill so that <laughs> pretty much. Give them away our secret. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then other than that, we have shows way off in, in the future past that. So, But Mar- March 16th will definitely be uh, a good one to go to. Cool. Well, yeah, I'll, de- I'll definitely try and get it out, uh, this podcast out this week then, and hopefully promote some of these shows and I stuff. It. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you say that, though, because I started applying to music festivals as media because I was like, <laughs> I'm doing something and I can just go for free. Like, hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> yeah. Um, so usually I kind of uh, include some music at the end of the podcast. Uh, okay. If you guys are cool with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, is there any songs in particular? Uh, probably Chameleon. Uh, that's kind of the song we're, we're best known for. Cool. Uh, it's this, the first track on the album. Sounds like fourth place available now, wherever music sold online. I don't think you can make more money that way. Awesome. Um, well, thank you very much, guys, for being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you.
If you liked this episode of the podcast, why not leave a review? You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. For up-to-date information on the podcast, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us at Froggy Style Productions. That's Frog, the letter E, Style Productions. For more ways to support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.